The bottom line is, what our impact events are about is bringing together the people that are making an impact. And at the end of the day, what we're talking about is a very simple thing. Information getting from point A to point B. It's been done for years now in our world of technology. What has not been done is the ability for a full ecosystem to be able to communicate effectively the information that allows each one of them to contribute their part in the system effectively and more importantly, cost effectively, so that the allowance of efficiency to create better pricing, better servicing, better products, and more than that, to innovate in ways that we haven't quite understood yet, but we do know that as the vast amount of data starts to accumulate, and the financial markets particularly can analyze that data, we will be able to create insurance products, we'll be able to create insurance products, banking products, any number of things that all drive down the cost of energy, that all drive down the cost of infrastructure, that is all for a benefit of every stakeholder. And the people that we try to bring together at our impact events are those people that are actually making an impact toward that end and contributing toward that end. And so in my opening comments, while I am very excited about the things that we've been working on with the Department of Energy and the Orange Button and expanding the XBRL taxonomy by thousands of data elements, to enable that kind of innovation? The reality is, is I'm not alone. I've been collaborating with a group of people in which each by themselves have been contributing an amazing amount. And what they contribute is not a technology solution. What they are contributing to is the convening of people, of ideas and, and uh, technologies that can solve solutions. They're impact players. And convening people to try to get them toward a common focus is a really tough job, I can tell you, because I do that myself. And in the group that I'm talking about tonight, the ones that we want to acknowledge, have taken on that personal task of convening people and trying to develop, really for a public benefit, the ecosystem that can work collectively and together together. And convening people and putting out a common idea, a common thread that people can follow, is huge. And one of those incredible efforts, a Herculean efforts, was just completed. And on December 26th, the reason we called this dinner meeting before tomorrow's DOE summit, was Richard Baxter and his group of bringing together an incredibly diverse group of people and put together in a single spot an authoritative, comprehensive guide for best practices that will help this ecosystem move forward. And so it's an amazing feat that he's done. But that's in one world, in the DOE, utilities, and the world that Richard's been in. Another one that has been incredibly successful in bringing you together all sorts of people, not just locally, but internationally, is our sponsor for tonight's dinner, and my friend, Alfred Berkeley, who put together, while at NASDAQ, the need for a common data financial reporting and his work in his first article in 2002 with Microsoft and Pricewaterhouse basically made the case for XBRL. 18 years later, XBRL is now available not just for reporting to the SEC for public traded companies, but is now available throughout the infrastructure ecosystem of the United States. And it's going to get on more and more as people recognize the value of this asset. So convening those people is one of the things that Al did, not only in the United States, but on an international basis, and we wish him luck as he heads to Davos tomorrow to try to expand that world to that global stage and make it so that the big financial institutions, my own, USI is the ninth largest insurance broker in the world. We're not interested in New York or California. We're looking for solutions that solve our clients' needs wherever they are. And so we wish you good speed in Davos and turning that message. But the utilities are core to our, to, to our nation's infrastructure. And one of the gentlemen that has been very active in this, Andreas Carvalos, who you might have met at previous impact events, actually wrote a book 12 years ago where he coined the term smart grid. His group has now published 35 different books. And they now host an annual event in Texas called the Digital 360 Summit, where he brings together a group of panels and then produces white papers, all to share knowledge all to convene people toward a common thread and a common understanding. And it's that common thread that when people recognize with some clarity how to approach things, 
that's when businesses start to come together and that's when it really takes off. And so Andreas uh, has been phenomenal in that and his Digital 360 Summit is one of the other convening efforts where he brings together stakeholders from the entire ecosystem and moves the ball forward. As we talk about the utility grid, we're talking a trillion dollars for construction, and we're talking some of the biggest construction companies and the biggest utilities in the world. And yet what is also important to us as a society is the smallest, the small contractor. When you think of all the work that's going to be done installing solar systems, those aren't going to be done by Bechtel. Many of those jobs can be efficiently done by small startups. But in order for those small startups to have that leg, that, that first bond, that first line of credit, there has to be programs in place by those, the impact players, who help pave a way for those small businesses to get started. And one of the leaders in that, and I'm very proud to call him my friend, is Peter Gibbs. Peter heads up the Small Business Administration Surety Program, and they now take XBRL for surety submissions, and they're modifying the SBA systems to be able to receive the same data reporting as our insurance partners, as our utilities, as the SCC. Having multiple federal agencies accept the same data standard makes it a very compelling business case for all the software developers that are out there and all the people that are in the space. If they thought they weren't operating in a silo, but it was part of a bigger, more convening, a more collaborative event, it brings people to the table. And Peter has done that with a federal agency the size of the SBA. That's a Herculean task in its own. The other one I want to share is at our head table, Campbell Pride. Campbell is actually heads up XBRL, and when we first got associated, the only thing XBRL did was report to the federal government for publicly traded companies to the SEC their financial statements. And under Campbell's leadership, they've been able to expand that now to include the orange button for building and operating and running energy systems. They've been working with the journey industry, created an XBR working group. We now have contractor financial statements and other core documents or data sets that allow the business community to be able to connect with the stakeholders. And without the XBRL taxonomy as that consistent, neutral, reliable source, we would not be nearly where we are. And so Campbell, I know it's a thankless job. As, and when I talk about data interoperability, I know everybody gets very excited and wants to talk about it for a long time. But you to be able to carry it off has been really phenomenal, and I thank you very much. Another one who's been working with XBRL under the DOE grant is Tom Tansy. SunSpec Alliance, uh, headquartered out in California, helps develop the data standards and the methodologies and processes under DOE contracts. And they've taken on the task of, of identifying the data elements and working with XBRL so that the solar industry has its own trade association looking at over a stakeholder interest and they brought them into the XBRL community and now we have the XBRL taxonomy we have thanks in large part to the work that SunSpec Alliance and Tom Tansy have done. Also, if we're going to be talking about building and building infrastructure, you can't forget the software that comes for the contractors. Because when you're asking contractors to submit their reports using a common standard, it has to be a common standard and the construction industry has to know about it. Nathan Wood has been leading an effort called the Construction Progress Coalition. He has since joined the XBRL working group and working with us so that the construction software uh, firms all have that same consistent reporting standard. So that when an owner says, Mr. Contractor, can you give me the data like this? The contractor can say, yes, I can. And the software capability is provided by the clarity that Nathan Wood brings from the construction space in partnership with the XBRL for the taxonomy, in partnership with the Department of Energy. It's all about convening people to solve not a technology problem, a consensus problem. And some of the big leaders is you need to have industry leaders step up and take a leadership role. I used to work at Wells Fargo and became very close with the folks at Wells Fargo Environmental Finance. And when I was talking to them about trying to manage construction risk in the construction space, and they shared with me their desire for managing construction risk on their construction loans for, for clean energy projects. We immediately found a synergy and we started working together. And John Privatali, the, the head of their environmental finance and the director of technology, has been literally leading the orange button effort as a major financial institution 
that other people could look at and say, if they're there, we've got to be there as well. And big dogs like that, when they enter the, the arena, they create a public benefit that is phenomenal. And in my partnership with Wells Fargo, not only did they help me create the data standard so that bigger projects could be built for the energy sector, but also they're very focused on helping small businesses. They're looking at the whole ecosystem themselves. And so they've been a wonderful partner on this project with the orange button. And uh, we want to acknowledge them. And their IT gentleman who's been providing all the consulting, Joel Border, has been a fantastic help and has been on every orange button call. And they've been offering their services as a public benefit to every stakeholder. And then lastly, I'm in the surety business. One of my big partners and one of the companies that has been a real leader in this space is Liberty Mutual. I've been working with Greg Davenport, who's been doing their data standards for a long time, a very long time. And it's been fun to watch as he's joined in. He helped lead the XBRL surety group. He helps lead the surety industry into uh, data interoperability with the group. But he's also been tireless in his time, and he's been supported by the president of Liberty Surety, Tim Michael Lejewski, who I've known for many years and had the pleasure of working with. And Tim has looked at me any number of times and says, if you bring us the data, we will provide you better services, more timely, and we want to be part of this effort. And so this group of, I have nine, but they're in, not 11 individuals, have made it possible for me to stand here tonight and tell you that the convening has worked, the resource of XPRL is in place, and that people can now implement, as we are, looking to do in California with USI and across the board in a number of places. We can create better products, we can build better faster, and more than that, we can help the entire community be part of the solution. So, as I started off,